So we talked about marshalling, data copying, and context switches. And the fourth component that adds to the latency of the RPC transmission is protocol processing, and that's the next thing that we're going to look at. Now the question is, what transport should we use for the RPC? And this is where we want to see how we can take advantage of what the hardware is giving us. If we are working in a local area network, the local area network is reliable. And therefore, our focus should really be on reducing the latency and not worry so much about reliability. It is often the case that performance and reliability are at odds with each other. If you focus on reliability, then performance may take a back seat. So here, since the RPC performance is the most critical thing that we're worried about, we're going to focus on reducing the latency, and we're going to assume that the LAN is reliable, and therefore, let's not worry about the reliability of message transmission in a local area network. That's the idea behind the next thing that we're going to look at. Let's think about all the things that can go wrong in message transmission and see why some of those things may not be that important given that we have a reliable local area network. The first thing is, you send a message, it might get lost. But if in a local area network, the chances that messages will actually get lost is not very high. It happens in wide area internet because messages have, have to go out through several different routers and there may be queuing in the routers and there may be loss of uh, packets on the wire and so on. But that's not something that you have to worry about in a local area network. So that assumption that messages may not get lost suggests that there is no need for low level acknowledgements. Why? Because you're sending a call and the call is going to be executed and the result is going to come back. And usually in network transmission, we send acknowledgements to say that, yes, I received the message. Now in this case, because the semantics of RPC says that the act of receiving the RPC call is going to result in server procedure execution and the result is going to come back, the result itself serves as the act. And therefore, we don't need low level acts to say, oh, I received your arguments of the call. You don't have to do that. And similarly, you don't have to have a low level act that says, oh, I received the results. Because the results were not received, the caller, the client is going to resend the client call. So the high level semantic of RPC can itself serve as a way we can coordinate between the client and the server and we can eliminate low level acts. And if you eliminate low level acts, that reduces the latency in the transport. The second thing is in message transmission on the internet, we worry about messages getting corrupted, not maliciously or anything like that, but just due to the vagaries of the network, messages may get corrupted in going on the wire that connects the source and destination. And for that reason, it's typical to employ checksum in the messages to indicate the integrity of the message. That checksum is usually computed in software and appended to the message and sent on the wire. But in a local area network, things are reliable. We don't have to do extra overhead and software for generating the checksum. Just use hardware checksum. If it is available, just use hardware checksum for packet integrity. Don't worry about adding an extra layer of software in the protocol processing for doing software checksum. So that's the second optimization that you can make to make the protocol processing leaner. The third source of overhead that comes about in message transmission is once again related to the fact that messages may get lost in transmission. And therefore, in order to make sure that if messages are lost in transmission, you usually buffer the packets so that if the message is lost in transmission, you can retransmit that package. 